Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now when I'd left the um, Soviet ground attack mission at the end of the last video, we'd, we'd broken off at a rather dramatic point. I'm afraid my poor phone's memory uh, was struggling to cope. Uh, no doubt the uh, size of the uh, engagement plus the excitement was getting a bit too much for both of us. So anyway, luckily it decided it would break off at a convenient spot. So we are now about to start the last turn of this mission. So just to recap, while the, um, the escort and intercepting fighters are engaged in furious combat all around them, the Soviet bombers have made their sadly rather ineffectual attack runs on the German ground forces and are now preparing to, to exit the battle zone. Um, so we're just going to play through the final turn and then I will have the doleful job of tossing up casualties and seeing, uh, assessing how the Soviets uh, and the Germans did and judging what effect it will have on the uh, rest of the campaign and of course as part of that preparing for the next mission. So let's see how we get on. So it's the top of the round again. We go back to the first uh, element of Soviet fighters and poor old Zaitsev again finds himself tailed by that very persistent Messerschmitt. So his wingman is going to gang up along with him on that aircraft and see if they can do it some hideous damage in, uh, over the course of the last turn of the game. So his wingman, first of all, is going to draw his mini hand of two cards. That's not too bad. He's going to first see if he can distract the German and also help Zaitsev out by playing a manoeuvre card. The German fighter, oh, is actually not able to do anything about this. So Zaitsev begins to uh, recover his position. And just to make it painful for the German, the wingman will also fire at him, which, uh, as we've seen, he can do nothing about. So his aircraft takes a bit more damage. Um, you'll recall in the previous turn he'd expended his full throttle counter, so he has no insurance at this stage. Now the question is, can Zaitsev capitalise on this? And the answer is yes, he can. Um, he decides he's going to make a fight of it because he reckons he can do this. Um, he plays a manoeuvre card. Encouraged, obviously, by the German's lack of reaction to his wingman. And the gamble pays off. They are back to neutral. Now, thanks to his burst rating, Zaitsev has a burst of two. And he is going to play that. And the poor Messerschmitt, which has finally been run to ground, has no choice but to take the two hits. Which flips him to his damaged side. He's not out of the sky yet, but he's in a rather bad way. Luckily, Zaitsev can do no more to follow it up and just draws some more cards, knowing that he's undoubtedly going to have to defend himself the next turn. And oh dear, that's a very bad hand for the final turn of the game. So moving over to the Germans, that flight over there, they have a bit of a choice. They could give up their position and try and knock down one of those Soviet bombers. But it's um, it's a tough call, really. They've got a good position on that Soviet fighter and voluntarily giving that up uh, goes against the grain a bit because it would be nice to shoot one down. Yes, that Soviet bomber is perilously close to death. But there is no guarantee that they might actually kill it off. So there is that. Um, plus, it's also it's already dropped its ordnance and you know done its strafing run. So it poses no further immediate threat. In fact, if anything, it's trying to get the heck out of there. So to maximise their combat power, the Germans are going to focus on trying to shoot that um, Soviet leader down. So their wingman is going to go in first. 
He draws his mini hand. Not bad. So he takes a shot at the leader. The leader does not like the look of that cockpit hit, so not unnaturally, he responds with one of his tight turns. The German wingman can't do anything about that with his barrel roll, so that ends his turn. But he has forced the Soviet to use one of his cards, so that's quite handy. The German leader, for his part, is desperate to get a killing blow in, so he plays a manoeuvring card. Now the Soviet has only got one blue bordered card, uh, defensive card left and not knowing what else the German has in his hand decides that prudence compels him to accept the manoeuvre so he's now being tailed. The German is extremely happy about this and hits his trigger button. The Soviet counters desperately with his tight turn, but unfortunately it is not to be because the Messerschmitt has a scissors card to which the Soviet aircraft cannot respond. So, the Soviet plane has taken three hits. Now it's lucky that it's a Soviet aircraft, a great big rugged LA-5, because had it been one of the German planes, three hits would have been enough to flip it. As it happens, it absorbs the three damage and remains on its fully operational side. Incredible. A somewhat disbelieving German pilot who swears that he hit him draws his cards, but it's not a great. It's not a great hand for a turn that's probably going to be purely defensive from now on. And it is, of course, now the turn of this Russian element. Um, and they're going to employ the tactics they have been throughout the game, which is if the leader's in trouble, the wingman will pitch in to help him. It's, it's what a wingman has to do, really, in game terms, particularly if your leader is in that state. So being a green pilot, he's just going to draw the one card, um, which he can't play as a wingman. So that was a bit hopeless. What about the leader? The leader's not overly fancying his chances, so desperate to shake off his enemy and also to put some safe, you know, some safe distance between himself and the Germans generally, he's going to sacrifice that out of the sun card to climb to high altitude. And that presents the German player with an interesting question, should he follow? The answer is yes. He has no use for these cards, but as long as he stays on the Soviet player's tail, he prevents him from doing anything useful. So he will climb after him. Pretty much for form's sake, the Soviet player plays his manoeuvring cards to try and shake the German off. Um, just in case, probably no good reason for this, but just in case the German's going to be sensible and hang on to the full throttle card, the Soviet player's not going anywhere. He's still disadvantaged. And he draws his two cards. Ah, good. Well, he's fairly certain he's going to survive the rest of this game. <laughs> So moving over to the Germans over here, they're now unengaged and they have a choice of targets. They could fight the two Soviet fighters here. Um, and they could also attack the um, escaping bombers. They might do a bit of both. Um, the German wingman is going to have a crack at the Soviet wingman. He draws his cards. Oof, good combination. And what is that poor Soviet wingman going to do about it? He draws his defensive cards. Could be better. So in keeping with the tactic of slowly drawing your enemy out, 
the German wingman will start with an In My Sights card. Unsurprisingly, because he doesn't want to have to eat that, the Soviet will respond with his tight turn. At which point the German wingman now grins smugly and plays the Out of the Sun card. Um, no response this time, unfortunately. So he has damaged three hits. Oof, so that's a total of five damage. And that's one LA-5 that's gone from its operational side to its rather badly hurt side. Not so good. Hmm. Now that leaves the leader with a bit of an interesting decision because he could either stay and finish off the fighter or he could try descending to see if he could finish off um, finish off that bomber down there. It's a difficult choice um, because he'd need to inflict three damage on that bomber, which he's capable of doing. And knocking down a bomber would ensure that the Soviet capacity for reducing German ground forces is, well, reduced. So, thinking strategically, he's going to do it. He's going to descend to low altitude. And he is going to make his attack. He has no defensive cards, but... Really, he probably doesn't need them. So the poor bomber at low altitude will draw its defensive cards. It's get It gets the full whack now, but oh no! That's very bad luck for the Soviet player. So as with the previous video, I won't keep the German in suspense because I'm solitaring this. Um, so the reactions of that poor, inexperienced... Um, Ilyushin pilot, uh, <laughs> basically the German doesn't even notice as he bores in. So he plays one, two, three maneuvering cards with no reply. So he's up to four bursts. Now what to do? Um, actually, you know, he didn't even need to do that. He may as well hold on to one. And rather than putting through the... Um, Soviet pilot through any misery. He's just going to play that in my sights card. There is no response. And the Soviet bomber is shot down in flames. Poor guy. Survived his first proper attack mission only to go down at the last hurdle. So the German player will draw, now let's see, he's probably going to come under attack. So he can draw three cards at low altitude. He's going to ditch those two and hope that he gets good defensive cards because that bomber leader is probably going to try and exact some vengeance of some sort. Um, and he's not wrong. For the first time in the game... And because it's the last element to go, the bomber leader is going to retaliate. And he is going to... Because that aircraft is damaged, he's going to do his damnedest to hurt it a bit more. So he plays a manoeuvring card. To which the Messerschmitt does not respond. Encouraged by this, he plays another manoeuvring card. And yes, I mean, he is pretty much just playing with his food. He can't seriously hurt the guy, but he's going to try. And for his final act of defiance, he's going to blaze away with an in my sights. Now the German will react with a barrel roll. Um, and much to the poor bomber pilot's despair, he can't counter that. So that was the last element. 
so I won't bother drawing uh, cards to refill his hand. The air combat ends at that at that point, and both sides um, break off. So that was quite an exciting. It's certainly a very tense battle between the two sides. I mean, the I wasn't sure how that one was going to go, to be perfectly honest, because the the Germans had a more even pilot quality overall, and they had good aircraft. And in terms of fighters, they um, they matched the Soviets plane for plane in terms of number of aircraft deployed. The Soviets, in theory, benefited from having Zaitsev, but he wasn't quite the powerhouse I was expecting him to be. Um, but that said, overall, I think the Soviet aircraft held their own very well. Um, and it was actually quite unfortunate that they did lo lose um, that Ilyushin right at the end. Right at the end. So, um, so there we go. The two sides break contact. And now the time has come to tot up the butcher's bill. So I'm going to move the planes out of the way. And bring back the campaign sheet. Now let's zoom in a bit for this. So the first thing I'm going to do is look at the mission results. If I shuffle over here, let's get in a bit closer. So we can see that despite their best efforts, the Soviet bombers only scored a single hit on the German ground forces. And looking at the damage level, all that is is unaffect, uh, unaffected. They simply didn't hit them hard enough with enough stuff. So for the campaign victory points, the effect is a zero. Now that's going to have consequences because it means that um, in terms of the larger campaign when it comes to totting up the effect of all the missions this week, the Soviets are not off to a good start in terms of um, shifting the marker closer to the fall of Stalingrad. So, or at least the surrender of Sixth Army, I should say. So I've just recorded that as a zero under results with an S for Soviet to remind myself it was a Soviet failure, unfortunately. Now, in some of the progressive campaigns, aircraft which return damaged are taken out of circulation for a bit. Um, you see that in the Battle of Britain campaign, but you don't see it in this one. And I think I understand the reasoning. Both sides were devoting so many aircraft to this campaign, or at least to this front. Um, I mean, the, the Germans and Russians were churning out planes like nobody's business by... Uh, by this stage in the war. Um, and although the Soviets were struggling to find pilots to man all these new aircraft, it was still quite an impressive achievement. So against the backdrop of all these available aircraft, um, planes which return damaged in effect don't matter and they don't count as losses. So the damaged German and Soviet fighters are simply put back into circulation. However, Nothing can bring back an aircraft which is completely shot down. So the Soviets have to cross off one of their, another of their IL-2s. It's the second that they've lost in the campaign so far. But as you can see, although it is a painful loss, they have quite a few more of the things to play with. So if I were the Soviet player in this... I wouldn't be too worried yet about the um, aircraft losses. In fact, if we look at the most severe aircraft losses by individual type, it's the poor Germans who've lost the most with their vulnerable Junkers 52s um, being shot down in droves. And they have been resupplying their men moderately successfully. But the price for that success has been very, very heavy. And they are starting to um, 
scrape the bottom of the barrel in terms of viable aircraft for the resupply missions. So that's that. What about the next mission? Now, if you'll recall from the first video, irrespective of how the um, Operation Little Saturn offensive went, the Soviets are committed to a further attack on the German ground forces. Now, narratively, that works quite well. This first attack was a failure, so of course they're going to go straight back in there. And um, looking at the available aircraft totals, both sides have already committed um, four of their available aircraft for the turn. Um, actually, no, that's not strictly too true. The Germans committed two, and the rest were made up for with resource aircraft. The Soviets have committed four. So the Germans have six aircraft still available, and the Soviets have eight. So what to commit to the next mission? I'll choose for the Soviets first, as they're the attackers. And... Looking at what they've already committed, that figure there shows that they can commit a maximum of four LA-5s. They've already committed um, committed two of them this campaign. So, oh, sorry, this week. So I think they can get away with committing another two. I like the LA-5. It's a solid, reliable aircraft. So... The Soviets will commit four aircraft for this attack. And I'll record that it's going to be an escort force of a leader and wingman LA-5s. And, hmm. Yeah, we've got loads of IL-2s. I will commit a leader and wingman IL-2. So, essentially... The same attack force as we had the last time, but hopefully it would do better. So now in theory, the Germans and Soviets will be thinking about this separately and secretly, but I'm doing it all open so you can see what I'm up to. So the Germans have six aircraft to commit defensively. They've already committed uh, one leader and wingman of BF 109 G2s. They can commit, we have a split number, a maximum of four such aircraft to a given mission and a maximum of six that week. So they've already committed two. They could, in theory, commit four aircraft to the defence of their ground forces and all of them could be BF-109 G2s, but they're having to think ahead to the final mission which will be the all-important resupply mission. So it wouldn't do for them to get too far ahead of themselves there. So, putting my German hat on, I think just to save as many aircraft as they can for the final mission, they will simply commit another two, just the two BF-109 G2s to the defence of their ground forces and hope that they can somehow make up the balance with their um, resources. So that's the Germans committed. So the Soviets, what are they going to go for? Looking at my resources, I can see that I've got the rockets resource available and the other crucial consideration is these will only be available in the week that we've launched Operation Little Saturn, i.e. this week. So, I think given that we have a ground attack mission, it makes perfect sense for the Soviets to expend their rockets. The other reason I like the look of this is because the rockets, although they have a very predictable damage strength, they allow the um, attacking aircraft a standoff ability, which reduces the effectiveness of flak. So we may actually do more damage with air-to-ground rockets and hopefully improve on that rather poor score. 
from the German perspective, what have we got? Um, they could pick some of their regular resources, um, but I'm a bit loath to do that because their options are shrinking. And like the Soviets, they only have um, this resource uh, for the duration of the Operation Saturn week. So it's a bit of a waste because the Germans have no attack missions this week. They're, they're playing defensive all the way. But the Italian MC200, uh, are, they're not bad planes. They're not bad planes at all. And given that the Germans are desperately short of resources that allow them to play additional aircraft, it's probably a no-brainer. So they're going to call on their Italian allies to boost their defences. And so we are all committed to the next mission. So it's going to be a lot like the one you've just seen. Um, there's going to be a similar number of Axis aircraft, although I will venture to say that perhaps the Axis defence might be slightly weaker um, than it was um, in the previous mission. But equally, the Soviet attack force is going to be somewhat weaker because their resource does not grant them additional planes. So it's going to be a total of four aircraft. Um, and whether they'll have any aces this time or whether they'll have more inexperienced pilots is a bit of an open question. But I will leave those questions for the flying of the next mission. Um, as before, I don't want to make you all sit there while I laboriously dig out planes and pilots. So I shall uh, leave it there, maybe with a bit more inspiring scenery by way of, our, of, of the Soviet target. And I will just say thank you very much for sitting in on the mission that I've just completed. I hope you all found it interesting and enjoyable. And um, equally, I hope you're looking forward to the next combat mission. Um, as always, thank you so much for joining me on the channel. It's really, really great to see you guys. Um, to my veterans, a huge, huge hello. Um, always, always glad to have your company, guys. Thank you so much. And um, if you're visiting my channel for the first time, if you're new, a very warm welcome to you. If it's down in flames that brought you here, I know I've not got that many videos uh, on this excellent game on the channel yet, but I'm going to be working to redress that. So please check out the handful of other videos uh, relating to this game that I've done. Um, but otherwise, if it's wargaming generally that's brought you here, <clears throat> excuse me, um, please feel free to have a meander. You're more than welcome. In any case, really lovely to see you guys, and I look forward to seeing you again when we wheels up in the next mission. Take care and all the very best. Bye.